Next, let's talk about ankle and foot structure. The ankle and foot, uh, the ankle joint has really two uh, joints, the tibiotalar and the subtalar joints. First, let's talk about the tibiotalar joint, which is the articulation of the tibia and the articulation of the talus, hence tibiotalar joint, and which forms a mortise-type joint, which looking at the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus, it forms the first part of the mortise, and then in green there's our talus that forms the second part, and in between we have this mortise-type joint, which allows for movement in two directions, dorsiflexion and plantiflexion, or plantar flexion. Dorsiflexion is the decrease of the angle of the joint on the dorsal surface of the foot where your shoelaces reside, and that's as if lifting your foot off the brake, and that is your anterior leg muscles like tib anterior, extensor hallucis longus, and extensor digitorum longus. Your plantar flexion are these um, are uh, is really decreasing the angle of the joint on the plantar surface of the foot, and this action is uh, as if you push on the brake or the gas pedal. And these are any muscles that vertically cross the back of this tibiotalar joint, like your posterior leg muscles and peroneus longus and brevis. Um, the next is our subtalar joint. In green, we see the talus, and the subtalar joint is the joint below it, which articulates with the calcaneus, which is shown in orange, which is why this is also called the talocalcaneal joint, which this synovial plane joint allows for movements in two directions. First, for inversion, which allows the plantar surface of the foot to, place to face medially, and eversion, which is the plantar surface of the foot to place laterally as if towards the wall. So first, to point those plantar surfaces of the foot medially, the primary muscles that do this movement are your tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior. And the principal muscles that will evert the uh, subtalar joint and point the plantar surfaces of the feet to the wall are your uh, lateral compartment leg muscles like peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. Uh, there are a number of ligaments that help uh, prevent uh, uh, over movement of these joints and uh, these ligaments are are what are sprained. When people talk about ankle sprains, a sprain is a tear of one of these ligaments, not to be confused with a strain, which is a pulling of muscle. Uh, let's talk about them individually. First, the anterior talofibular ligament, which uh, receives its name because it attaches to the talus and to the fibula, and it's on the front, abbreviated ATFL. And so what the ATFL is going to do is limit or resist anterior translation of the foot on the tibia. In addition, when this, uh, uh, when you plantar flex the ankle, the ATFL resists inversion during plantar flexion. Uh, and may I also mention on this that um, the ATFL is the most commonly sprained ligament in the, uh, of all these ligaments. Uh, the posterior talofibular ligament uh, attaches from the uh, talus to the fibula, and it's on the back, hence posterior. So the PTFL is then going to do the opposite of the ATFL, which the PTFL prevents posterior translation of the foot on the tibia. And in addition, it prevents rotatory subluxation of the talus, and this PTFL is the strongest out of all of those ankle ligaments. Now the calcaneal fibular ligament, or CFL, attaches from the calcaneus to the fibula. And uh, this muscle, in looking, uh, pardon me, this uh, ligament, when looking at the back of the ankle, uh, in the, the right ankle from a posterior view, it's going to uh, limit inversion in neutral or dorsiflex position. So, but the CFL's greatest strain occurs when um, the inversion moment is applied with dorsiflexion. Uh, now we're going to go with the right ankle in a medial view, and we have the deltoid ligament. And each of those, the, the deltoid ligaments is really comprised of a number of di different smaller ligaments. Deltoid is sufficient. It's this medial uh, ankle ligament, and it gets its name because anatomists were like, it's a triangle, the delta symbol, because we love our shapes, but that's why it gets its name. And this medial deltoid ligament is, uh, in, in this view, a uh, posterior view of the right ankle, it's going to limit or prevent uh, eversion, limit a uh, hyper-eversion of the ankle joint. So let's talk about ankle movements just overall, because a lot of people 
uh, in talk about inversion, eversion versus supination and pronation with regards to the ankle joint. Most people think inversion equals supination. Yeah, it's not quite so. And most people say eversion of the ankle equals pronation of the ankle, which is also not really so. So in this picture, we see inversion versus supination. Inversion is when is the movement of when the plantar surface of the foot faces the midline um, that acts on that subtalar joint. Supination is inversion at that subtalar joint plus plantar flexion at the tibiotalar joint and adduction of the uh, forefoot. So supination is more than just inversion, but most people will use these terms synonymously. Now, how about eversion versus pronation? Eversion, also at that subtalar joint, is when the plantar surface of the foot faces the wall. Pronation is eversion of that subtalar joint and dorsiflexion of the tibiotalar joint, and the forefoot is abducted.